Now I know there's people out there who have been watching these workshop projects in order of how I've done them, and you're going to be saying to yourself, hey, wait a minute, he hasn't finished the mahogany clock yet. You'll recall that I didn't like the way the dial board looked on the mahogany clock, and I wanted to replace it with something made with real mahogany. Well, I'm still working on that. And right now the Envirotex is curing, and I'm going to give it about four or five days to come to a complete cure before I actually start cutting the dial. In my video, The Mahogany Clock Number 1, you'll remember all that beautiful mahogany that I had laying on the backs of the chairs here? Well, this is all that's left. And what I want to do here now is make a little clock. Well, I've got this time to kill. And I'm going to call this little clock the Easy Clock, because hopefully it'll be nice and easy to make. This 8-inch dial that you see here is the last of my store-bought dials. I've had it for so long I can't even remember where I got it from. But it looks really nice, and I'm going to use it here. And remember, measure twice, cut once. Now this first piece here, I'm going to resaw it and use it for the dial board. You'll see. And this piece here will be part of the back of the clock. It'll be just behind the pendulum disc. Okay, that's it for the four and a half inch wide pieces. Now the rest of the board, I'm just going to rip it up the middle and that'll be for the rails and the sills. And here we go with sill number one. And sill number two. And sill number three. Here I'm cutting the two 14 and 3 quarter inch long pieces for the rails, or I guess you call it the sides. And I'm cutting them both together like this. This way I can make sure they're both exactly the same length. Here I'm just laying everything together to make sure it all fits together properly. Wouldn't be the first time I screwed up on something like this. Remember that video I made about that plaque? If anything can go wrong at will, well... It probably will. And here's one place I sure don't want anything to go wrong because I don't have any more mahogany of this size left. And it looks like it's going to be okay. Now all I have to do is just square up two edges and glue it together. Now I know I could have saved myself some time here by using a piece of plywood for the dial board. But then it wouldn't have been real mahogany, and it would have actually been noticeable in the corners around the dial. And I want it to look as good as possible here. I'm using my good quality waterproof glue here. I don't want this dial board to come apart in years to come. I'm just going to leave this overnight now, and then tomorrow I should be able to just shave off that squeeze out. It's the next day now, and the glue is pretty well dried here. And I just want to try and scrape off as much of that squeeze out as I can. And there's a really good reason for that. And this is it. One time I didn't remove a lot of squeeze out from a project. And boy, it sure messed up my sanding belts. Now I know I've said in the past that this drum sander is not a thickness planer, but I'm going to use it here and I'm going to give it maybe an extra couple of passes and it should take it down to about a quarter of an inch. And that way it'll go really good with my quarter inch rotor bit that I'm going to be using shortly. And here I'm just making it perfectly square. There we go, real mahogany. I deliberately cut the dial board a little bit bigger than where it's actually going to go on the clock. And that way I could router out a quarter inch slot all the way around. And the dial board will fit nice and snug. In these workshop videos that I make, there are no retakes. If I screw up, you see it. Let's see if you can spot my mistake that I make here. Well, in case you didn't see it, there were three pieces there that I routed out a slot. I only needed two of them. The bottom piece didn't need a slot. Oh boy. The rails, or the sides for the clock, didn't have to have a slot running down the full length. That's why those blocks are there to stop it. 
I worked my way up to 600 grit sandpaper here. These two pieces are going to be seen the most. They'll be facing forward. You can see here how the dial board fits nicely into those slots. Makes it look a lot more finished off. And also now you can sort of see how the clock's going to look when it's finished. I need to determine here where the pendulum rod is going to pass through the middle sill. I don't want that slot to be any wider than it has to be. This is a hollow chisel mortiser. It does a great job on making square holes. And this is where I need a square hole. I know it looks like I'm missing a little bit here, but actually I'm not. What I usually do is I'll do the extreme outside plunges first, and then I'll go along and I'll miss a little bit, usually a little bit less than the width of the chisel, and then afterwards I'll go over it again and I'll plunge through and nibble out the rest of it. Works really good for me anyway. And there we are, a nice, neat, perfectly square slot. I'm going to glue this little clock together in two, maybe three steps here. And I know right now there's people watching this and they're thinking, wow, he's using a nailer to hold it together? Well, this isn't just an ordinary nailer. This is a headless pinner. I got this wonderful little tool from Canadian Woodworker. And what it does is it uh, fires a very small, or rather narrow, pin into whatever you want, up to two inches long. The pin has no head, so after you're all through sanding your work down, you can't tell where it was. Those of you who like to use epoxy glue to hold wood together know how slippery and slimy it is, and the two pieces of wood, after they're clamped together, have a tendency to shift a little bit. Now the idea is if I quickly put in these pins right now, before I put the clamps on, it'll keep those, the two pieces of wood from sliding around. I've done this before and it works really good. Okay, now the clamps are on and the pieces aren't sliding around. Now you're going to notice though that the uh, epoxy glue did darken the mahogany. Well, that's okay because the varathane is going to darken it exactly the same. You won't be able to tell where it is. And these are the last two stages of the glue up. I'm going to put one side on and then wait for about an hour and then put on the other side. Well there, that's it. It's all basically put together. Just a lot of removing excess glue and sanding and uh, then I can put the varathane on. Then we'll see what we got. Sanding the ends here is fairly easy. But sanding the front and the back is going to be a little harder. What I want to do is make a sled here that's going to help carry the clock through the drum sander. And that way I'm not going to get any snipe in the last two, three inches. Now the snipe with this drum sander is practically next to nothing. But when I'm using a high gloss finish, I can notice it. This sled here is approximately a sixteenth of an inch higher than the clock. As you can see, the sled is about five, six inches longer than the clock, and the snipe will occur on those rails. The clock will have already passed through before it happens. Making a sled like this may seem like a lot of extra work, but it really only took me maybe an extra half an hour. And in this way, the back and the front of the clock are sanded perfectly flat, and the joints are nice and flush. In case you're wondering, what's that thing with all the holes in it? Well, that's my homemade downdraft sanding box. 
I have it hooked up to my large dust collector and it does just a fantastic job of removing sanding dust from the air. Now the drum sander did a pretty good job here but I'm going over it with the orbital sander here and I'm just starting out at 80 grit, worked my way up to 600 grit, went over the whole thing with 600 and this thing is just silky smooth. It's almost a shame to put varathane on it. Now this is a wall clock. That means it has to be hung on the wall. And I was going to use a standard bracket here, but that would have been a little bit too easy. I wanted to make something a little bit more unique, something a little bit more custom. So I came up with this idea. Now this is one of those things that's almost impossible to describe, so I'll just show you. Now when a person puts a nail in the wall to hang up a picture or a clock or something, you don't put it straight in the wall and you don't usually have it as steep as a 45 degree angle either. It's usually at about a 30 degree angle. So I'm just setting my drill press here at 30 degrees. And here I'm just widening the entrance to the hole so it'll be a little bit easier to find the nail when you're trying to hang up the clock. Now I know the clock's not going to be viewed from the back anyway, but I just want to round off the rough edges here. And here we go with the first coat of varathane. And boy, does that ever bring out the richness of that mahogany. While this first coat of varathane is drying here, I'm going to see what I can do about the pendulum disc. And I think I'm going to try and make one out of mahogany, and that way it'll match everything else. I have two pieces of mahogany here. Uh, one's a little bit bigger than the other. And I'm going to mount them both onto a piece of scrap so that they'll fit easily into the lathe. And the uh, smaller one, that'll be my test piece. That'll be my practice piece. Now if you watch my YouTube video, The Mahogany Clock Part 1, you'll see where I cut a piece of mahogany for the pendulum rod. I still have some left over, and I'm going to use it here for this little clock as well. And here I go with the practice piece. And the little practice piece didn't turn out too bad at all. The larger piece that I'm actually going to use on the clock, I made it a little bit thinner, but I did it exactly the same way. Okay, the varathane's done. I've got about three coats on it. Looks pretty good. And this clock is only going to be the sum of its parts, so I guess I better work on the parts. The dial is just simply glued into place with epoxy glue. And I'm using a square here to make sure that it's going to be square to the case. And uh, remove the plastic protective covering. And it looks pretty nice. Now for some reason I've collected a lot of hands that will fit battery movements. And I'm going to select these ones here for this particular dial. I think it'll match up nicely. You know, the older I get, the harder I'm finding it to screw this little nut on the hand shaft. This movement came from Craft Time Clockery and they do include a battery with it. And as you can see, 1.6 volts, that's right up. Okay, this little clock is finally finished. And I'm planning on donating it to the local thrift store here. I don't need another clock in the house. And I'm just going to hang it up here for about 24 hours, make sure it runs okay. And uh, ironically, it's hanging beside the scrap wood box from where it started. Now while I was making this clock, I was thinking, I wonder how inexpensively a person could make a nice little clock. So today, I ordered enough parts to make 10 little inexpensive clocks. I'll probably use mahogany again. Now before I actually start on these little clocks, I'm going to have to finish that large mahogany wall clock. But these little clocks, I'm hoping to have them ready for gifts by Christmas time. We'll see.